All right, we are the Ben and Skin Show. I'm Ben Rogers. This is Jeff Skin Wade. I uh, want to thank you guys for coming out here to Heim Barbecue, the new river location. Raise your hand if this is your first time to Heim. Wow. wow. Incredible. So it's a barbecue revolution. Like, I fell in love. I fell in barbecue love with Heim today. I was talking to my wife. This is my family, by the way. Skin's family's not here because they don't love him. Oh, hell. Um, but for my family, it was really important for them to be here. I see my family about three minutes a week. <laughs> Tops. That's a good week. Um, we were bad parents. We pulled our kids out of school. I wanted what? To, I want, I wanted to, oh man, I'm going to be talking to all those principals. I wanted. What's them. that, Grace? Okay, you've taught her to say we're playing hooky. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Just like your dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, as you may have noticed, we're going through a little bit of a radio change. Um, we know that those things are difficult. Nobody likes to have their routine switched up. But basically, how would you describe the opportunity we were presented with? Well, uh, I would just say this. Hopefully, if you folks were nice enough to come out here today and take part in the story and get some food, you'd be willing to go listen to us at another radio station. So all I can tell you, or we can tell you rather, is that when we do hit the air, which will be about another 60 days from now, it, we we honestly and truly believe that it's going to be the best version of the Ben and Skin show we've ever done. What the place that we're going to has offered us and allowed us to do is so much creative freedom, so much fun, uh, and then they're giving us multiple platforms to do all kinds of things. So I think if you actually took the time to come here today because you like what we do, we're about to just blow it out of the water. And we're very, thank you, we're very, very excited about it. Uh, We're excited about the future. We're excited about the people we're going to be partnering with, which we can't really speak on right now, but it'll all come out eventually. And uh, honestly and truly, we've never been this excited about what our show is going to be. I can can certainly promise you that. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, It was really hard to get up super early in the morning. Boy, that was throwing off our routines. It and, sucked, uh, Ben. It sucked. It absolutely sucked. And uh, complete uh, creative freedom is going to be awesome. We're basically getting turned loose. Better opportunity for us, our careers, our families. So we're excited about that. But because we're making a switch, we have we are contractually ob- obligated to not be on the radio in DFW for a certain amount of time. Now, it's not a long time. Like you said, we got about 60 more days to go. But once that kind of started resonating with people we were blown away by how many listeners said man i i don't understand where are we going to get the gravy going to set it off story and so we started thinking i was talking to my younger brother jonathan and he was like well why don't you do it live do one in dallas do one in fort worth and uh raise money for a charity and we're like golly that's a great idea so the reason we're here today is because so many of you asked for this um so thank you guys for stepping up and coming out here to join us today as we tell this terrible tale of holiday turmoil and destruction for me personally i'm glad you can all be happy about my failure Uh, but i personally love it i know you do uh and that's why we're here today now after we do the gravy go and set it off we're going to do q a and so if anybody has questions about our show about where we're going about we can answer whatever we like or or anything maybe you've missed uh being able to Hear our opinions on some. We'll do a live Q and A. I have a question. <clears throat> Go ahead. Since your kids are here, are you going to cuss as much as you did last night? Oh man, I am not going to. Kids, watch your language. Don't say what I say. How much does Daddy cuss at home? Don't answer that. A lot. All right. Uh, this is Max, uh, my fourteen-year-old. Miles, my twelve-year-old, and Grace, my soon-to-be nine-year-old. <laughs> here. I'm doing a good job. She's wearing a shirt with our beer on it, so she's nine. He's a good dad. <laughs> and uh, Grace, my... Grace plays a prominent role in this story, too, in one way or another. Does she? Oh, oh. that's right. Yes. She does. Yes, she does. I'd be shocked if she remembered it, but... I think, is now a good time to bring up my smoking hot wife? Yeah! Wait, what? What? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my wife, Cat Rogers. Thank you. Cat, don't cuss. I won't. Unless Uh, you have to. Huh? Yeah, Grace says says mom doesn't cuss. 
<laughs> okay, Miles said she does to me. That's because you get in trouble. Might, might want to mic up your kids. All right, we're going to share a story uh, that we like to tell every Thanksgiving. And it's a story, like I said, of great personal failure for me. But to understand this story, you need to understand the family dynamic for me. I had an older brother and a younger brother. Tony's my older brother. Jonathan's my younger brother. Dude, they went through school like it was nothing. Straight A's, head of every class, you know, like top GPAs. They not only got marketing degrees at Texas, they got, you know, their master's degrees from Texas in marketing as well. They're complete studs. I, too, have a marketing degree. It took me 10 years to get it. It was more of an online thing before that even existed. <laughs> It's your fault. We dropped out of college to be rappers. That was your fault. That was your fault. Cat. Oh, All sorry. I didn't want to blame that on you. Good idea. I like yeah, it. thank you. It was a good idea. By the way, when I met my wife, I was an unemployed white rapper. <laughs> and I still got her. So that lets you know the salesman that I am. Yeah, basically, she was <laughs> aiming low at that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did, why, did you, why did you fall for an unemployed white rapper? Because you talked me into it. Yes! <laughs> Okay. It's human whispering. It is. Yeah. So family dynamic, both brothers, studs, me, the black sheep. My brothers, when they talk about me around the holidays, they, they say that I'm a wild card. <laughs> Remember that? Yes. They said I was a wild card, and here's why. I could do something that makes the family Thanksgiving spectacular, or I could ruin it. A complete roll of the dice. You never know. Like one time, I invited this guy. We were doing. Radio, we were at uh, K Star Forty Nine. We were doing the Rogers Report, and hold we on start a second. Do you guys even know what K Star Forty Nine is? Does anybody even remember that? Yeah, couple couple media folks over here. Yeah. Explain what K Star Forty Nine is. So when I graduated from college in '99, ten years after '89 in high school, um, I got my first job was at K Star Forty Nine selling television advertising. During the day, they ran like Andy Griffith. Then another Andy Griffith, then Andy Griffith, and then the Mavs game. So it was like crap TV all the way up until the Mavs games. And so we were selling advertising inside Mavs games. And I just got lucky to get that job. It was a pretty cool job. And, uh, yeah, that's great. So we were at K-Star 49. And we kind of BSed our way into getting some sports content going. And, and not only that, it's kind of like, really, it's kind of a fake TV station. It's really just a marketing vehicle. And because... It was such a small, down and dirty operation. Ben saw immense opportunity there, right? Because if he had gone to a bigger TV station, there's more people and it's harder to, to get things going. And Ben's like, man, I can make some things happen here. And he did. And I was still finishing college, but he got us on some Dallas Mavericks pregame shows in the form of this thing he was doing called the Rogers Report. And he wouldn't have been able to do that, I think, at a bigger TV station. You basically saw some opportunity and created something for us. Yeah, and that was, you know, around 99 and uh, 2000, 2001 in, in that era. Uh, area. Now, family-wise, let me explain the further family dynamic. So this is the story's going to get sad, but only for like 11 seconds. It's going to turn around. But in March of uh, 2005, my dad thought he had the flu. Went to the doctor. He went to a little quack shack or whatever. And they were like, uh, yeah, I think you're jaundiced. You need to go to the hospital to get checked out. It was pancreatic cancer. He died 28 days later. So imagine thinking you have the flu. You're gone in less than a month. So our family dynamic changed. Around that time, my older brother, super stud, uh, had gone to Walmart to become their CMO. So my, he has the highest job in marketing that you can have. He's the chief marketing officer of Walmart America. <clears throat> my younger brother had, was just getting his master's degree at the time, um, and he went and ran my dad's company when my dad passed. I was just going full-time on the radio with this guy at Live 105.3 mm -hmm. around that time or yep. whatever. A yep. um, couple years after that. So essentially, our family was fracturing. I come from a very small family, and uh, I always thought we were like witness protection. I did too. <laughs> or... Because we didn't have a lot of relatives. You didn't have any relatives. Or, or my parents were from Roswell, so they could have been aliens. They were. And so basically you had one brother in Arkansas, one brother here just working like crazy, me being on the radio, my mom, you know, dealing with the loss of her husband. And, and so it was a crazy time in our family. Finally, I had started making money. I was the kid who 
Again, the, the, the terrible rap uh, venture that crashed and burned. Now I'm in advertising sales. I'm starting to make a little money. And I get this thing where I'm like, okay, I want to bring our family together. And so I'm going to volunteer for our, ho- our house <laughs> to host Thanksgiving. Get in there and make Thanksgiving, cat. So I sent out a group text to both my brothers and my mom. And I was like, hey, hey, Thanksgiving this year. We got it. My, my older brother's like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, we got this. He's like, okay, this should be good. Because it was our first chance to say, hey, I'm a big boy. I got this. I got our family. We're good. Tony, my older brother, I got this, bro. I've arrived. We're hosting Thanksgiving at our house. So I sent out that text. I was so happy, so proud. And then I get another text from my wife going, what? <laughs> Hadn't even discussed it with her. And this is like most of the things that happen with you guys. Ben has an idea. He tells everybody about it before she even knows about it. And then you get drug into this deal. What were you thinking when you saw the text? Never made a turkey. Oh, God. I was three weeks from her due date. So So she was in your belly. Yeah, you were in my belly. Two toddlers and never made Thanksgiving meal in my life. <laughs> yeah, so it was probably, I forgot that part. I forgot to clear it with my wife. <clears throat> Good so, job, Ben. <laughs> Ben's and the big boy. And it was likely two days before Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if to understand, our, so I screwed that up, but my wife's awesome. If you understand our relationship, you know, I screw up a lot of things and she saves it. Um, and so she's like, okay, we'll figure this out. About to have a baby, two toddlers, or close to toddlers, both under the age of six. Anyways, so she goes, I think I've got a solution. I was watching Ellen, and there was this Groupon thing where you can get a master chef to come in and basically handle everything. I'm like, whoa, get catered? There, it's Ellen's personal chef? She's it's like, half yeah. off. It's ha- and it was, okay, <laughs> that's our dynamic. I spend too much money. She spends too little money, if that's possible. And here's what I mean by that. Recently, I got on social media and I was talking about how I ate some bacon that was like three months old. It's because of her. Now, mind you, I was on the third piece of bacon. I was like, this doesn't taste third piece. This doesn't, I don't think this tastes great. I'm not, I need to prove that this bacon yeah. is bad for me. Three pieces in, but she kept it in the fridge because it saved money. So that's our dynamic. She saved money, I waste money. And so basically, the Groupon thing, she saw it was half off. Ellen's Gourmet Chef. It's catered up to 12 people. So I'm sitting here going, well, I kind of screwed up by putting her on the spot to host, but she's got a solution. Okay, we're getting it catered from Ellen's Chef. I start texting my brothers, Ellen's Personal Chef, Gourmet (laughs) Chef. Catering, we got go. We're going big time. I mean, and it really sounds logical, doesn't it? That a <laughs> national TV show would have a chef just making Thanksgiving for everybody for half off. That sounds like it makes perfect sense. So the day before Thanksgiving, Cat goes, "All right, you got to go get the food." I was like, "What do you mean? It's getting catered to? What are you talking about? It's a catered thing." She goes, "No, you got to go pick it up." I go, "Pick it up." <laughs> Meanwhile, my older, my older brother, Tony, is witnessing all this. So Kat and I are having this exchange, and she's like, you got to go pick it up. I'm like, pick it up. And Tony's over here going, I like this. I like where this Takes is going. Takes another sip of Crown and then rubs his hands together. <laughs> so, uh, so then I get the information from her that's shocking, and I'm alarmed. And then I start selling it to my brother. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're, we're picking it up. Of course, yeah. We knew this all along. We were going to have to go pick it up. Oh, my God, Kat, give me the address. And Tony goes, I'm going with you. <laughs> so this is the day before Thanksgiving. We go to this, I go to this address. I'm picturing like a honey baked ham store or some storefront, some half restaurant looking thing. Where but, Ellen sometimes shoots TV shows when she's in town. <laughs> but I get to it and it's um, a three story office building. And it's got like mirrored glass, the whole building. It's three stories high. There's, there's no signage. There's no, I'm like, Now, why would this catering restaurant be inside this office building? (laughs) Turns out it's on the third floor, so there's not a lot of walk-up traffic to this catering business. So I I go up the elevator to the third floor. We get out, and my brother and I see a sheet of paper like this, and somebody has just printed it out and wrote, Groupon Turkey. 
and with an arrow <laughs> and taped it to a wall. And I'm like, okay, okay no, this makes sense. There's so much traffic yeah. and people got to know where to go. So you right. get off the elevator. So we get off the elevator. We walk over, follow the sign. Okay, here's the office. They're going to have a big marquee, sign up, another sheet of paper that says Groupon Turkey. Oh, that's their, that's their marketing plan. Taped up. Yeah. So a whole thing. Perfect. I'm like, this is red flag, red flag, red flag. So there's also chaos everywhere. I noticed that when I get through the door, I'm talking to the receptionist, and she's panicked. She's got like eight people complaining. There's Everyone's like on their phone going, oh, my God, they don't have our food. Oh, hey, they don't have our food. There's no food here. We're not, and Thanksgiving's ruined. I hear all these people panicking over their Thanksgiving being ruined at this point. And that's a really great thing to walk up to, I think, <laughs> just, you know. 24 hours away from being the big boy and providing Thanksgiving for everybody. Yeah. As you walk up to that, what is Tony doing at this point? So I don't know if it's possible for one side of your mouth to reach your ear and the other side of your mouth to reach the other ear, but it's the biggest smile I've ever seen from a human. You look like a cat that just ate a mouse or something. I mean, he couldn't have been happier or more content. It was almost like he was standing next to a fire. (laughs) <laughs> you know, he just couldn't have been more comfortable, couldn't have been happier. I don't think he cares about the quality of this Thanksgiving food. He wants to see this thing crash and burn. <laughs> He's there to watch the plane crash. And so, basically, I, I don't play this card a lot. You know, you know. I, I, I consider myself to be human whisperer. Yeah. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, so Ben's always had this amazing ability during times of, let's just say, crisis or, you know, you got a little friction going on. Ben can usually walk in. And get to the person in charge and talk to them, and then suddenly everything is smoothed over, right? You get there. Here's a great example. Uh, Last Super Bowl, when everyone from the fan gets to the hotel, it's all these terrible rooms, and there's not enough rooms and all this. And Ben talks to the manager, and the next thing you know, everybody's got suites. Like, (laughs) it's it's an unbelievable skill to connect with the most important person in charge and then suddenly have that person make it their mission to make sure that this human is happy and that everything is going to work out the way we need it to work out. That is human whispering. You've seen this before, Kat? I've seen it a lot. (laughs) A whole lot. But it's worked out for the most part. For the most part, yeah. yeah. So to find out who the manager is, I have to talk to the receptionist. And she's going nuts. She's stressed out. And I was like... Hey, God, sorry, crazy day, huh? This sucks. Uh, hey, um, God, how long have you been working here? She goes, this is my first day. <laughs> it's the day before Thanksgiving. You just, okay. I'm like, it's fine. I was like, hey, listen, can I, can I visit with your manager? And then she's like, oh, you got to talk to my manager. Am I going to get fired? I go, no, 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 no. So I'm a radio host, and I was talking about this on social media. I tweeted Ellen about it, da, da, da. I just want to talk to the person in charge and, no big deal. I just want to figure out who's in charge. He's like, okay, good. I need you to go in that conference room. I'll have the manager come get you. I'm like, conference room? I'm not, I'm not conference room. Why am I get? And there, I look over, and there's eight people pacing on their phones in a conference room. And they're Everyone, all radio hosts? No. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I go in there with my brother. My brother's so happy, so content. A manager comes in. He's like, hey, sir, how are you doing? How can I help you? And I was like, well... I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here. I'm a radio host. We were talking about this on our show, and I've been tweeting Ellen about it, this Groupon thing. What? Where? Where's the food? I'm supposed to pick it up. He goes, yeah. Listen, there's been a problem. I, go, I can tell you're dealing with a lot of issues. What? How long have you worked here? He goes, this is my first day. I think about how talented this guy is to become a manager in one day. You're dealing with a superstar, man. That is a high climb, if you ask me. the biggest pop-up scam of all time. And I should have known that. Kat, you went back to Groupon. I can't believe you went back to Groupon. We had only used Groupon one other time, to my knowledge, where Kat goes, hey, we're going to go look at Christmas lights with a bunch of our neighbors. We're going to have... In a limo. In a limo. We're going to have, what, five couples... Five couples, we're all going to meet at our house, a limo's going to pick us up, and we're all going to go look at Christmas lights around December. I got a group on for it, half, half off. Half price. Half price. <laughs> oh, half off, I'm in. So basically we get all these couples at our house, and all of a sudden in 1987 Lincoln Town Car with like uh, a rusted panel on the front missing its grill shows up. I'm like... You can fit maybe three people in it. <laughs> and he is the most claustrophobic person I have ever met in my life. And so that was our experience with Groupon. Now I'm dealing with this manager in this conference room, and he goes, hey, man, listen, I'm just going to be honest with you. 
the truck carrying all the food was in a horrible accident. I was like, oh, God, is everybody okay? He's like, yeah, it was a bad accident, though. Um, That's he goes, fair. You need to cut them some slack. Yeah, man. and I was like, God, I feel bad. He, yeah. And then he goes, you can see the truck if you don't believe me. I can see the truck. You were on the third floor. He goes, yeah, let's look out this window. I'm like, they brought the 18-wheeler full of turkey, or what? they brought the catering truck back to the building? And I look down, and it's really just like a Ford F-150. <laughs> and he's like, yep, see? And I was like, okay, it had been rear-ended. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't bad. In the bed of the F-150, there was just a bunch of frozen food. <laughs> Just melting. It wasn't some gourmet chef cooking it up. It was they went to Costco or they went to Sam's. It's a Swanson's Thanksgiving for everyone. And you know, it's like they don't give you bags or anything to carry it out. You just carry all your stuff out. And well, they just dumped it in the back of this pickup (laughs) truck. It wasn't frozen. And then they got in a wreck. And so the guy thinks he's like solved everything. He's like, yep, see? Truck got in an accident, so we're good. I'm like, (laughs) that just gives me more questions. Why was it in the bed of a truck? I'm like, listen, man, this this sucks, and man, I I, I got to be honest with you. And then I throw down this card. I need you to fix this. Yeah, man. Because I'm probably gonna have to go get on social media and just destroy this because this is yes. garbage. Your temporary Thanksgiving group on business is gonna get slammed, <laughs> <laughs> and you guys might not survive this one. So he goes, okay, 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 okay. All right, because you know you got you've been talking about it on social media and everything. You're a radio guy. We're going to be able to take care of some people, not everybody, unfortunately. But uh, you guys got the executive package, right? Oh, you bought? Did you buy the executive package? The executive. Wow, <laughs> the half-off executive package. <laughs> executive. Hey, package. we're hosting. So what? Do it back. So, so do it what back. did the executive package come with? Everything. So yeah, Vince, executive everything. potatoes, green yeah. beans, sweet potato, whatever. You act like you're new to the executive package. Come on, man. <laughs> So, so now we're in this hierarchy of we got the executive package, kind of a big deal. So this guy goes, look, I'm going to call you tomorrow, and we're going to give you a location where you can come, and we'll give you all your food. I was like, it's Thanksgiving is tomorrow. <laughs> just, we're going to get contact with you very early in the morning. We'll let you know where the pickup location is. Pickup location? Is this a drug deal? What the hell are we talking about? <laughs> So I'm like, God, I'm calling Kat. I'm like, Kat, this is... And of course, I'm laying it on thick because it, you guys know in a marriage, there's opportunities to get W's <laughs> and there's opportunities to take L's. Mm. That's a huge L for her. So I'm rejoicing in that. Now, my brother's rejoicing... Or is it? Well... See, I was thinking more of what she's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> my brother's rejoicing in my L. I'm rejoicing in her L. I'm like, Kat, this Groupon thing sucks. I told you we can't trust Groupon. And so she gets on the phone, and she does some human whispering. She contacted First Cafeteria and was able to get a whole different – we bought a whole different thing. They saved our Thanksgiving, right? Right. So she called Furs. We're set. And it was the executive Furs package, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So she calls me. She goes, hey, I found Furs. We're good. We got a turkey. And meanwhile, I'm with my brother, and uh, I'm like, hey, hey, Tony, they got – Kat saved it. We've got Thanksgiving. Let's just leave. He goes, no, 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 no. We're not leaving. (laughs) We're going to see this thing through. <laughs> and so he gets the manager's attention. He goes, hey, where's the drop location? <laughs> he goes, okay, I got your brother's number. I'm going to call you guys in the morning. You guys can come get it. And Tony's like, excellent. We're counting on it. Thank you. <laughs> we have no backup plan, so we need this. Please stay in touch. <laughs> so we leave, go home. The next day is Thanksgiving. And at this point, I'm like, Kat's the hero. She saved us again for the second time. And I'm like, let's just forget about this. The guy's not calling me to meet him with the drop location. So I'm like, hopefully everyone forgets about this. And you're getting really excited for the Lions game that will be kicking off very (laughs) soon at noon. Well, around 11 o'clock, I get a call. And it's the manager. He goes, hey, man, (laughs) told you. I got you. I'm like, what? He goes, man, I saved the day. I got you. Here's Here's the location. I was like. I'm like hoping my brother doesn't hear me. I'm like, hey man, we're good. We we got it taken care of. We're, 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 I'm actually not going to need anything. We're, we're doing it. Tony's like, I'm sorry. What's that? Yeah, I turn around and Tony's this close. What's hey, going what? on? Hold on, I'm, yep. we're not going to need anything. No, no, no. We need things. <laughs> so, so Tony's like, no, no, no. We're going to see this through. Get the location. So we get the address. Before we do, Tony gets a uh, Tony gets a cocktail. Out of a red Solo cup. Grace, would you mind bringing that up here? 
Be careful, Grace. That has a cocktail in it right now. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, my younger brother, Jonathan, and his wife, Angela, had this cup made. <laughs> Gravy going to set it off. <laughs> so Tony gets a red Solo cup, makes a cocktail. We get in the car. We go to the drop location. Again, I'm, like, looking on my, you know, app on my phone or whatever. Where are we going? Well, it turns out to be the parking lot of an Uncle Julio's. <laughs> where every Thanksgiving story begins. And it's like an Uncle Julio's parking lot. We're driving through the parking lot, and there's not another car in sight. Because I mean, it's, it's Thanksgiving. It was exactly like The Walking Dead. or It was just like <laughs> there's no human beings for like 100 miles. <laughs> Nothing's moving. I don't think there was birds flying. It was, no, it was nothing. It was completely dead, empty parking lot, except for one black pickup truck. And I'm like, dude, let's get out of here. Nobody's here. And my brother goes, oh, yeah, there's a truck over there. <laughs> I go, that's just a pickup truck. He goes, well, what was the other food in? <laughs> All right, fair enough. I'll drive over there and just see. It was this black pickup truck backed in in the corner of an Uncle Julio's parking lot by itself. And as I drove up to the truck, I was assessing the danger level of the truck. The, <laughs> tr- the truck's <laughs> assessing the danger level of me, right? <laughs> yep. And just so you know, if you've listened to the show, Ben in general is paranoid about danger. Like his danger radar is up at all times at a very high level. And in fact, uh, I called him yesterday, or actually he called me, and I answered the phone. And he didn't know that I'd answered the phone yet, and I swear I heard him say this. Yeah, that's a pretty mysterious looking truck over there. (laughs) I'm like, Ben, hello? We were in our neighborhood. Hello? (laughs) He goes, oh, hey, what's going on, man? Yes. And explain what you were doing, Ben. (laughs) All right, come up here, Grace. You want to be a part of this? Okay, so Grace wanted to go to her friend's house, but she wanted to ride her scooter. But I didn't want her to ride her scooter because it was the middle of the day. They got let out of school early, and I was like, it's a little dangerous, so I'll drive you. It's freaking Light Farms. And as I was driving her, (laughs) what? It's Light Farms. Yes, she's right. No one's going to get kidnapped. Right. So that's a copy point, Ben. Do you remember? (laughs) Your kids will never get kidnapped in Light Farms. Uh, So uh, do you remember when I pointed out the mysterious truck? What did I say? You said, that's a mysterious truck. (laughs) Thank you, sweetie. You can sit down. And so now Grace is confused as to why all the neighbors are mysterious. It's just the neighbor's truck. So Neighbors can have trucks. It's okay. It's like so, a $70,000 truck. <laughs> parked in a mysterious way. <laughs> um, yeah. What are you doing with that King Ranch package? <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, I, uh, I decide to, with my brother, we drive over slowly to this truck that's backed in at Uncle Julio's. All right. As we get closer and we're assessing the danger value, this guy's assessing us. He's looking at us. He gets out of the truck. Now, when he got out of the truck, it was as if they unloaded like 800 pounds of material. The truck went wonk, wonk. I mean, it was a large man. <laughs> I, I, and I'm a large man, and this guy made me look like you. <laughs> and I don't know how he got out of that truck without a shoehorn because it was like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Barely popped out of that thing. It's like it, it was like a baby deer being born. The truck gave birth to the guys. Like, I'm like, how was you bigger than the truck? How were you in that truck? The guy waddles over to our car with a clipboard, and my brother Tony goes, "He's got a clipboard. This is going to be good." But you're thinking it's a weapon, right? I mean, he could he could hit us with that. Um, but the guy looks like Huel. From Breaking Bad. How yeah. would you describe Huel? Uh, has everybody seen Breaking Bad here? Enough of you? Yes, by show of hands. Put your hands together if you've seen Oh, yeah, very good, very good. So if you haven't seen it, Huel is, I'm being, I'm being conservative here. He's about a 400-pound black dude, and he's so big that his head looks tiny, right? Like, if you, if you go back and watch, like, man, that guy's head is tiny. I think it's an actual size normal head, but he's just so big that it kind of comes up to this weird tiny cone. And every time Ben has told this story in my mind, I visualize Huel holding a clipboard. So he, he, we're, Tony and I are still in the car. I'm driving. Windows down. And Huel says, Did y'all order a bird? <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all order a bird? And I'm just frozen. I don't know what's in my... My brother's just taking over at this point. Tony's like, yes, yes, we did. The executive. The executive plan. We got the executive platter. 
And the guy's going through the clipboard, through his notes, and he can't find our name. So this thing is totally screwed up again. I'm like, they don't have our name. That's fine, sir. We don't want to inconvenience you. We're, we're good. And the guy goes, no, no, no. If you had, you sounds like you. he said the executive, that is the plan that we have. So I got you. I got you. We're good. You're not on the list. I can tell you guys got it. So then, since he didn't have us, he didn't know what we, what we ordered. So the guy starts going down the clipboard. He's like, did y'all have green beans? <laughs> and Tony's answering everything. Yep. <laughs> did y'all have corn? Yep. <laughs> Did y'all have mac and cheese? You know, he's just going down this list of items, and Tony's saying yes, and everything goes, I'll be right back. (laughs) He waddles back to the truck. Sure enough, the bed of the truck is filled once again. No ice, no cooler, no nothing. Just a bunch of frozen boxes from Sam's or Costco thrown in the back, and he's just rifling through there. All right, here's some potatoes. All right, the carrots. And he's just, and he comes back, and he's got this big, you know, carrying all this stuff. Puts it in the car, and then he's like, okay, y'all set? And uh, Tony's like, well, what about the turkey? He goes, oh, y'all ordered the bird? (laughs) Executive. The executive package (laughs) is all right. So he waddles back over to the truck. He had been keeping the turkeys in the cabin of the truck with him for some reason. Well, because it's the prize. And, (laughs) yeah, it's too valuable to just have a thief come take it out of the back. Right. He was keeping the turkeys in little white trash bags. They looked like trash compactor bags. Not a big hefty bag, but a little tiny white trash bag. And I will tell you, it, when I peeked inside, it looked like a vulture had been electrocuted. <laughs> it was mostly purple. It didn't look like a turkey. If it was, it was the most unhealthy turkey of all time. Yeah, maybe created in a lab or something. Not a real bird. I'm like, I, is this real? And I kept like, where's the TV crew? We're being pranked, right? This is not real. <laughs> oh, and then Ellen jumps out. Right, Ellen! <laughs> so, uh, so anyways, we, we get the trash bag turkey or whatever. And by the way, that thing never got out of there. Went straight into the trash dumpster behind my house. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't even comfortable with it being in my car. I mean, it looked dangerous. So... Excuse me. So, we have everything we need. We're good to go. My brother is rejoicing. I'm totally humiliated. I'm wearing the L. I probably just looked like an L. Taking the L here. We're ready to leave. And then Huel goes, Y'all got gravy? Oh, yeah. What do you mean, got gravy? Did y'all need gravy? (laughs) Why would we get the executive plan and just go make our own gravy? Doesn't make sense. Hey, we're catering everything but the gravy. (laughs) So like Tony's like, yeah, we need gravy. He goes, all right. Guy goes to his truck. This is in the cabin of the truck again. Must be very valuable. Yeah. Huel then grabs the largest Kool-Aid pitcher I've ever seen. (laughs) Like, if this Kool-Aid pitcher was so big, if it were to spill here, several of us would die. <laughs> I'll just, just it was right out huge. The back. It was like the Exxon Valdez of gravy. <laughs> Veins are popping out of his arm as he's holding this with one arm, the biggest pitcher of gravy of all time, and there's foil over the top of it. Uh, to, keep, to keep it, you know, you don't want it to spoil. you got to put the foil on top of this. So he's walking over to the car... With this Kool-Aid pitcher full of gravy. With, and I'm like, he's got a bunch of those in the cab. Like, he gives everybody who got the executive platter. They all, everybody who gets the executive platter gets a huge thing of gravy. And so I'm like, well, how, where are we going to put this? I mean, I can't put this in the car. And he gets over to the car and he goes, y'all got something to put it in. <laughs> it's so bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, buddy, we do. We drive around with uh, gravy saucers. <laughs> I got ten of them. What size? Who does? What, what are you talking about? No, I don't have a gravy receptacle. I didn't come here ready to with a warming dish for the gravy. But then my brother has a cocktail. <laughs> he's watching this and he's just having so much joy. Later, when I asked him about it, he said, "He said it's it's like watching a sporting event." And when you're watching a sporting event, you see something happening in this game, and you realize, damn, this game's special. (laughs) This is the type of game you're going to be talking about 10 years from now, saying, man, do you remember that game? He just knew something magical was happening. (laughs) And so I watched in slow motion as I was telling Huel, we don't have anything for the gravy, we're good. And my brother went, 
I have a solo cup. Huel's like, bet. Huel takes the red solo cup in one hand. Giant pitcher of cream gravy in the other one. Peels back, you know, peels back the foil, and he starts dumping it in. And, brother, it took everything I had not to throw up. It was... I mean, it was the thickest gravy of all time. I mean, it was incredible. Like, filled to the top. I glanced over at Tony, and his level of joy was borderline illegal. I mean, he was having too much fun. I saw every tooth in his mouth. He was smiling so big. Even teeth in the back. I'm like, damn, it's impossible to smile that big. So Tony's having a great time. We now have a red solo cup filled with gravy. Is it and, chunky style? And I, It's super chunky. And I don't know what Huel's doing. Huel's going to close the deal now with some level of customer service. Mm-hmm. He's wanting to wrap this thing up and make me feel good about the frozen food he just pulled from the back of his truck, the dead electrocuted vulture from his front seat in the trash bag, <laughs> and now the eight pounds of cream gravy he's pouring into the red solo cup. And... Maybe like the nicest waiter, the finest waiter at the finest dining establishment just wants you to feel better about your experience. As he's pouring that gravy, he goes, oh, yeah. (laughs) Y'all know what he said? What'd he say? One more time. Oh, yeah. The gravy gonna set it off. (laughs) And there you go. The end. (laughs) 